Well, hello. God bless you today. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, and I pray that you're having a fantastic day. The Lord is good and worthy to be praised, even though I think we're in the eighth or the ninth day. I'm not keeping up with it uh, 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 precisely, but I think we're in the eighth or the ninth day of the Russian-Ukraine war. Now, many comments are being said about what this war is all about, and and there are those who have uh, uh, various takes on uh, uh, th th this war and what uh, uh, Putin is trying to do or what he's not trying to do or, 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 any, or things like that. Listen, my friends, I'm praying that God ends this. I'm praying that we have a divine intervention. Innocent people are being killed. Civilians are being killed. Soldiers are being killed. Property is being destroyed. Um, uh, children's psyche uh, are being toyed with. The, the, the psyche of, uh, of, of, of homes uh, being uh, broken up. Uh, men having to leave their wife and their children uh, as they take them to the border and then go back and take up arms and fight for their country. Uh, we see Russia ramping up its forces. And I tell you, I, I don't know how uh, you can pray any other prayer except God in this. I, I do have some questions. I'll be honest with you. I do have some questions. And if I could ask uh, the question, if I could, if I could talk with the president of the United States, I would ask him, why are we still buying anywhere from four to 600,000 barrels of Russian oil per day if you want to end this? And why didn't we sanction all of the banks in Russia? If, we, if you sanctioned 80% of them, but guess what? Putin controls 100% of, of them, and you leave him with 20% to move money around or to do whatever it is he's doing, then that is not uh, working. What we do know, what was obvious, even though they told us for weeks that they had uh, sanctions that would be preventative, well, the sanctions didn't prevent anything. You're watching the news. Russia has invaded Ukraine and the Ukrainians are fighting for their lives. Uh, I don't I, I think that we should not do things to uh, escalate this even further. I'll be honest with you. I'm not for us canceling our nuclear miss, missile tests to, to show Russia we're not going to test ours, hoping that they will follow suit. I think they've already shown that that kind of uh, approach just doesn't work. Uh, I think we need a much stronger approach. And I think, my friends, that we're not just here, that this thing didn't just happen. I'm, I, I believe that the debacle in Afghanistan sent the message to Putin that we're weak and that now is a good time to make Make to, for him to make his move. Uh, I think the canceling of the Keystone Pipeline, which shifted the, the balance of power when it comes to energy from America to Russia. Uh, uh, you know, I think that if we just, if the president would just uh, finish the pipeline, just announce that we're going to do it, that would say to our European allies that in case Russia cuts you off, which most of them get their oil from Russia, the oil flows through Ukraine, going to the European countries, going to the NATO countries. If, if the speak it is turned off by Putin, and I wouldn't put it past him, if we had, didn't have our own internal war on fossil fuels, then our European allies would know that they have a choice. Our president has begged OPEC uh, to produce more oil, OPEC there in the Middle East. And OPEC have said to President Biden repeatedly, no. So they're not producing more. Russia is the big oil gorilla now. We, are on, we have launched a war on fossil fuels and all of these things, my friends, 
play a role in what we see that's taking place. And so we need we need to pray. I don't want to play uh, uh, too much, uh, too many politics with it. But the policies, uh, uh, they come from where they come from. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you watched the State of the Union address. I, I, I thought it was a Trump speech revisited, at least part of it. Uh, the president talked about strengthening the borders, refunding the police, um, uh, and, 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 and talked about buy American, uh, buy American products. Uh, but, but he didn't talk about uh, uh, removing some of uh, the things that, 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 that cut our production. He didn't talk about if we're going to buy U.S. oil. Are we going to pump more oil? If we're going to buy U.S. goods, or are we going to uh, open the door so that American manufacturers will have a better go at it? If we're going to improve the economy, are we going to improve the economy uh, by printing money? You know, as you flood the market with dollars, the more dollars there are in the market, the cheaper the dollars become. So we got we got problems. We got things that are going on that we need to pray about. Uh, and uh, and and I will say this, and and I'm going to make some of you mad. I'm I'm going to do it. I know that I am, and some will uh, hear this the wrong way, but I'm going to say it anyhow. In my attempt to invite you to come to Bible study, I think that it would be awesome. If we had the same concern for the truly innocent that's in the womb that we're showing for those good people of Ukraine who are having to leave their homes, leave their families, uh, uh, their uh, bombs are going off everywhere. But I'm telling you, maybe you can't hear them, but bombs are going off in abortion clinics in the womb of women every hour of every day in this country and those weapons of mass destruction that they're using to uh, stamp out the truly innocent uh, is taking place on a daily basis and very few, uh, comparatively speaking, are saying anything uh, about it. So I just wanted to bring that up. And uh, uh, and we talk about the sanctity and the dignity of human life when speaking of the people of Ukraine and their their life has dignity, meaning, worth. And it breaks my heart to see them going through what they are going through. But what about the unborn? What about the unborn? How can we uh, 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 support? I guess we figured out how to do it. People who are for the, the killing of the unborn, and yet we see them saying what they're saying now about, uh, about uh, Ukraine. So we're praying for Ukraine. We're praying that the war will end. We're praying that God will, will stop Vladimir Putin. We're praying that it, that, that it is not, that it doesn't escalate. We're praying that our boys and girls, our citizens that are being sent uh, over to the NATO countries where it is true when the president says they're not going to go over and fight against the Russians, what, what has got to also be said is, as long as no NATO nation is pulled into it, if a NATO nation is attacked or if a bomb by accident, uh, uh, a missile hits a NATO nation and war is declared, then everything that have just been said about our soldiers and what they won't have to do, all of that will be um, will 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 be uh, null and void. And so I'm praying against World War Three. I'm praying that God will send peace. I'm praying that we will make the right political decisions and the right moves back home uh, stateside and around the world so as to send a message of strength to despots around the world like uh, 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 Putin. And, and, and we've got to keep an eye on China. And by the way, I know the media has moved on. I know the media is covering the war. I know that everybody's looking toward Ukraine, but I'm looking south. How about 
closing our borders. How about, the president said in the, in, in the State of the Union, it's got to do something, we got to fix the borders. As, as a, how about finishing the wall? How about doing something to stop the flood of illegal people into our country? We are sending soldiers to protect the borders of NATO, we are all up in arms because the borders of Ukraine has been invaded. If Vladimir Putin was smart, he would have kept his soldiers home and pulled off in Ukraine what's happening to America on the southern border. We've been invaded. We're being invaded. And we're doing nothing to stop it, my friends. And this is not good. This is not good. A nation has to have walls. We have to have borders. Borders. And without them, uh, without borders, you can't have a nation. And, and that's, that's just the way that is. Listen, my time is almost up. But I got a, a text here that was sent to me from a very fine listener, uh, someone who follows this ministry, and I want to respond to you. You, you bless me with your question. I think it deserves an answer. It says, the Bible, uh, the Bible says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Now I assemble myself every uh, Sunday and Thursday in front of the TV to hear the message that God has given to the bishop. Speaking of yours truly, this is so kind of her. I have really gleaned so much from this ministry. My question is, will this be acceptable to God or do I need to attend a service in person where I may not be getting fed this kind of substance? I don't want to be out of God's will. What a powerful question. Thank you so much. And keep questions like that coming, comments like that, and uh, we will uh, select some and respond to them. My, 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 my quick answer, and I don't want to go too far with this, but let me tell you, um, uh, when the Apostle Paul was evangelizing um, Europe, and he had gone to Macedonia. And uh, uh, during that time, Macedonia uh, was under the Roman rule and no sanctioned religion. If Rome did not sanction that religion, then the religion could not be, the, could not worship in the city proper. So Paul goes to Macedonia, you see all this in Acts chapter 16, and he looks for a church, he looks for a church, uh, a church. He looks for a synagogue and there was no place there to worship. But someone told him as he searched the city in verse 13 and, and on the Sabbath, we went out uh, of the city by the river where prayer was wont to be made. And we sat down and spake with the women that resorted there. And, uh, and, and so the women they were gathering there, having prayer to the true and living God because it, it was not sanctioned in the city. So they had to go wherever they could to find like-minded people to get a word from the Lord. Uh, Amos chapter 8 and verse 11 says, Behold, the days come, saith God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, not a famine of water, but of hearing the word of the Lord. And they shall wander uh, from sea to sea and from, from the north even to the east, and they shall run to and fro, seeking a word from the Lord and shall not find it. In that day shall the fair virgins and young men faint for thirst, for thirst of the word of God. Uh, they that swear by uh, thy, look at that, that swear by the sin of Samaria, that say thy God, O Dan, um, liveth, and, and the manna of Bathsheba liveth, even they shall fall and never rise again. Now the Bible teaches here that men were going to look for God's word and can't find it. And, and, and notice, so there's a fam the famine is not that people don't want to hear the word. The famine is people have a hard time finding someone who will preach the word. I hate to say this. Too many preachers 
have gotten bored with the Bible. And uh, these guys are trying to be psychologists and psychiatrists, and uh, they're preaching their own story. They, uh, they're, 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 they're trying to dress it up. And there are people who just want the word of the Lord. Teach me the Bible. Teach me what God's word says. So my word, my answer to you, uh, and give me some scripture on it, you have to go. The, the key is to be fed. And you are right. Hebrews 10, 25 does say, forsake not the assemblings of yourselves together. And it is bad that you apparently you're in an area where if you go to a in-person service and you're not being fed, then that's not your fault. That's, that's the fault of the preacher if he's not feeding you the word of the Lord. God's A plan, God's best is for you to find a good open church. Go there and hear God's word and be fed the truth. But if you can't, you don't want to rob yourself of hearing the truth of God's word, whether it's me or someone else. You want the word of God as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. So if the word of God is feeding you, my word to you is if you're getting the word, stay where you're being fed and, and, and do not give up the search. There's got to be a church there somewhere where they're preaching the word of the Lord because God says, I got 7,000 who have not bowed to Baal. If God has one who's preaching the word, then God has at least 7,000 more or so who are preaching the word of the Lord. But if you can't find them in your area and the best that you can find is some preacher online delivering you the word of the Lord and where you can read along with that preacher and see the word of God in context and delivered uh, in a relevant Christian uh, manner, staying true to the scripture then my word is you stay with that ministry and you get your blessing and you continue to grow and still look, still look, because it's got to be somewhere, maybe just a little shanty around the corner. Maybe only two or three people are gathering. But, they, but if he's preaching the truth, I'd rather be with two or three and hear the truth than to be with thousands in a great big stained glass window, beautiful church. And the man gets up or the woman and says nothing. The key is to get the word of the Lord. Now, I'm excited about the word of the Lord tonight. And uh, God is blessing us real good. So I want you to meet me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> you guessed it, Bible study. Tonight, we are going to walk in the scriptures. We're going to study the word of the Lord together. God has something to say. And let's close with a prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life, for health, and for strength. We thank you for your goodness, your kindness, and your tender mercy. Father, as while we're here on this medium together, I, I join my prayers to the prayers of these great saints who are watching, and we pray, God, that you would bring peace. God, bring peace to Ukraine. Bring peace peace to Europe. Bring peace, oh God. Stop the Russian aggression. Send uh, those soldiers back to, to the boundaries and the borders of their own country in the name of Jesus. And God, we not only pray for the war in Ukraine, but we pray for the war that's launched on the, on the unborn. We pray for the battles that's taking place in the streets of America every day. We pray, oh God, that you would send revival for the greatest problem that we have, Lord, is that this nation and other nations around the world have turned their back on you. But God, we turn to you and we call on you today. Bless us and keep us and cause your face to shine upon us. And everyone who is in the, uh, in my, who is, who is a part of this prayer, may God's choice blessings be yours. I pray for you. I pray for your family. I pray for your children. I, if you're married, I pray for your spouses. I I pray for your income. I pray for your health. I pray for your spiritual health. I pray that God blesses everything that has anything to do with you. 
in Jesus' holy name. And it is so. Glory be to God. It is so in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ. If you can be here in person, come on out. You'll be glad you did. And if you can't, join us on this medium. And we will certainly uh, appreciate you being a part of our service. Thank you for letting us come into your, into your life. Thank you for this time. God bless.